what the crop is cropping. Crop is about cutting something short. In Photoshop's case, it's cutting the edges of a photo. Now let's open up Photoshop. Let's select the crop tool or press C for the crop tool shortcut. Now before we start cropping away, keep in mind that there are two kinds of crop. You'll see this in your options bar. It's a checkbox named delete crop pixels. If you leave it checked, this is destructive cropping. It'll delete the pixels outside the crop box you just made, and you won't be able to re-edit them if you've saved your changes. But because I haven't saved yet, I can still undo it with the step backward command, Control alt z or Command-Option-Z for Mac. If you leave it unchecked though, this is non-destructive cropping. It'll only hide the pixels that you cropped away. You can click them once again with the crop tool and re-edit them. In general, I like to keep this unchecked because mistakes are unavoidable here and there. Now that that's out of the way, there are three main reasons to crop an image. Cut unwanted parts away, improve image composition, and rescaling. For cutting unwanted parts, let's take a look at this example. At first glance, this image looks okay. But if you zoom out, you'll see these two hideous black bars. I don't want that in my image, so I'm going to crop it. To do this, make sure you've selected your crop tool, grab these crop handles, and crop away. Line them up against the image, and press enter. Voila. Now if you're obsessed with details like me, you can zoom in to do a more accurate crop. Like so. Moving on. Now here we have an image that has a lot of unused space. The composition is a little off. It's unbalanced. We need to improve its composition. Once again, make sure you have your crop tool selected. Then here in the options bar, we can pick a guideline to improve our image's composition. By default, it's set to the rule of thirds. But if you want something else, there are other options inside this flyout. You can Google if you want to. Choose whatever guide tickles your fancy. But for this example though, I'm gonna stick to the rule of thirds. I'm gonna eyeball it till it looks just right. There, seems all right to me. Side note, you can also rotate your crop to different angles. Just click your crop, and then hover your cursor to the corners of your crop until it looks like this, and then rotate. Press enter. Next up is rescaling. And you can find this in the options bar of your crop tool. Let's take a tour. We have three blank boxes. They stand for width, height, and resolution. Width is for adjusting the crop's thickness. Height is for how tall you want your crop to be. And resolution is about your intended viewing experience. Wait, what? What viewing experience? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's what I mean. You see, resolution is a number tied up with pixel per inch or pixel per centimeter. It dictates how many pixels or colored squares there will be in an inch or centimeter. To prove this, let's say this person wants a one by one printout of their face. So we can see the pixel per inch example here. So let's put in one inch by one inch and 300 pixels per inch. Center the crop on her face.
Press enter. Boom. Now let's zoom in. If you counted these colored squares from left to right, it would amount to 300 pixels, colored squares. And it looks like an awful viewing experience. But keep in mind that it's zoomed in at 500 plus percent. So let's zoom out at 100. There you go. Now from that pixelated mess, it's actually decent for the purpose we've set, which is a one by one printout of her face. This is what I mean by viewing experience. It's how you want people to look at your image. So ask yourself these questions. Are people going to look at it up close, like business cards, magazines, resumes, phone screens? This is close viewing, because you intend for people to look at it up close. Or are people going to look at it from afar? Like billboards, tarpaulins, banners, e-billboards. That on the other hand is called distant viewing, because you intend for people to look at it from a far distance. Now as a general rule, pixels become rough or pixelated when zoomed in too much. So if you put in a wrong resolution value, your image will look like this, with the edges. And pixels become blurry as well when you zoom out too much. So if you put in too little, uh, too high a value for pixels per inch, it'll look blurry. It's similar to how we see with our eyes. Now, the closer you want to view the image, keep in mind, the higher the pixel per inch value you need to put in. Like this one, I put in the maximum 300 pixel per inch. So you don't get pixelation. And the farther you want to view the image, the lower the pixel per inch value you need to put in. The lowest is 72, so your image doesn't get blurry. Here's a helpful table to follow as your guide. Now that that's out of the way, let's look at an example. Here we have a family photo, and they want to make this wallet size. To start, make sure you have your crop tool selected and then press the clear button here to remove any existing crop presets. Now input the size we want. A common wallet size image is 3.5 by 2.5 inches. So we put that here, 3.5 by 2.5 inches. Now remember, this is a wallet sized image. So it's meant for printed close viewing. So let's put in 300 pixels per inch. Now that we've put in the values that we want, it's time to improve image composition. Let's say the family wants to highlight their faces instead of the background. We should cut out the excess background. This makes sense, you know, because if you wanted to put this image in your wallet, you'd most probably want the focus to be on the faces you love and not the background. Right? So there. Press enter. This is what it would look like on wallet. Going back. Now I prefer with height resolution because it's accurate, but with height resolution isn't the only preset for cropping. Under this drop down, you can see other presets like ratio, which you can use for that Instagram looking box feel. It's this one one square. Like so. You can also save crop presets that you use all the time, so you won't have to retype your settings again and again. Here's how. Type in the custom values that you'll want. So I'm going to use that wallet size as my example. And then in the drop down, click new crop preset. 
and then rename it. Wallet size. Then click OK. If you click that drop down again, you'll see that newly created preset. To delete crop presets, just click delete crop preset. And then select the preset that you want to delete from the drop down and click delete. Okay. So thanks for watching guys. Like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it. Leave a comment below if you have suggestions for future Photoshop tutorial videos. And subscribe plus click the bell icon if you want to see more videos like this.